we're asked to evaluate the depth integrals. For a quick review, the depth integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to big F of b minus big F of a, where big F is the antiderivative of little f, the integrand function. We also don't include the plus c when determining the antiderivative because f of b would have a plus c, and so would f of a, and we subtract, the c's would simplify out. So for the first example, we have the def integral from one to five of two x plus one with respect to x. We begin by determining the antiderivative of two x plus one. The antiderivative of two x with respect to x is equal to two times x to the power of one plus one or two divided by two, and then plus the antiderivative of one with respect to x, which is one times x or x. And the limits of integration are from one to five. Let's go ahead and simplify the antiderivative. Two divided by two simplifies to one, leaving us with x squared plus x. And now we determine big F of b minus big F of a, which in our case is big F of five minus big F of one. Big F of five is equal to the square of five plus five. Then we have minus big F of one is equal to the square of one plus one. Simplifying, five squared is 25 plus five is 30, minus one squared is one plus one is two, 30 minus two is equal to 28. Before we take a look at the second example though, let's look at the graph of the integrand function f of x equals two x plus one over the closed interval from one to five. Remember we can think of a definite integral as the sum of the signed area bounded by the integrand function and the x-axis over the interval of integration, and we say signed area because if the area is above the x-axis, it's positive. If the area is below the x-axis, it's negative. So here we see the graph of f of x equals two x plus one. Notice over the closed interval from one to five, the area bounded by the function and the x-axis is this green area. All the area is above the x-axis, and therefore, we can say the def integral is equal to the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over the closed interval from one to five, which we now know is 28 square units. In this case, because the shaded area forms a trapezoid, we could verify this using the area formula for a trapezoid. And you may want to pause the video to do this. And now let's look at our second example. Just like when we're differentiating, sometimes we need to change the form of the function to more easily integrate, in this case, we are going to rewrite the integrand function of eight divided by x squared as eight x to the power of negative two. So the given def integral is equal to the def integral from one to six of eight times x to the power of negative two with respect to x. Now we find the antiderivative of eight x to the power of negative two, which is eight times x to the power of negative two plus one, which is negative one divided by negative one. The limits of integration are from one to six. Let's go ahead and simplify the antiderivative. Eight divided by negative one is negative eight, giving us negative eight x to the power of negative one, which is equivalent to negative eight divided by x. And now we determine big F of six minus big F of one, which is negative eight divided by six minus negative eight divided by one. Simplifying, we have negative four thirds plus eight, or plus eight over one. Obtaining the least common denominator, which is three, we multiply the numerator and denominator of eight over one by three. Notice this gives us negative four thirds plus 24 thirds, which is positive 20 thirds. And once again, before we go, let's take a look at the graph of the integrand function over the closed interval from one to six. Once again, notice how the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over the closed interval from one to six is all above the x-axis, and therefore the value of the def integral, which was 20 thirds, is equal to this yellow area. I hope you found this helpful.